What's up guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today we have a story of a spoiled kid who gets his parents to sue the teacher because the teacher failed him on a test that he failed because the spoiled kid didn't study. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. The whole school basically went into like a lockdown type situation during the court case. This was an absolutely insane story that I know you'll enjoy. So sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, drop a like in the video to claim your free nothing. And with that all being said, let's jump right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story, Nathan. So anyways, there's a kid in Nathan's class who we're just going to call the spoiled kid. Everyone knew that this kid came from money and like serious money. I don't mean like his parents were like, I don't know, semi-successful businessmen or lawyers or anything like that. I mean serious, serious money. However, it was always kind of rumored that the money was a little, uh, how do you put it, suspicious like kind of like a mafia type money or whatever, obviously, or not obviously, but that was, that was never confirmed or anything. It was always kind of a rumor, but it was always kind of the unknown saying that this kid came from very suspicious money. And his parents were always kind of a little dodgy as well on a, like I the subscriber, uh, what I call him, Nathan remembers that on like, what, like, what do your parents do for a job day? Cause not day or whatever, but like for one of his classes, you'd go around and you'd say what your parents do for work or whatever, or what they are or, or what they do or, or something like that. He said that like, he said like the most suspicious type jobs, like his mom was just like stay at home mom, which is totally fine, totally fair. But his dad was like a businessman who travels the world and does things. And it never got more specific than that. When the teacher asked what kind of business, the kid literally responded business. And other than that, it wasn't just that that made him suspicious. It was a lot of other things. However, this story all starts when the class that Nathan has with the spoiled kid has a really big exam. So Nathan and the spoiled kid were both taking calculus in their like junior year, which is it's pretty intense math for uh, high schoolers, at least. I know that I never took calculus in high school, and I, I mean, I'm taking the whole series right now, and it's pretty difficult. But anyways, this was definitely a class that you needed to study for and you need to prepare for if you're going to do well in it. Of course, unless you've already taken calc before, then you don't. But anyways, there was a really big exam coming up, and uh, the spoiled kid was not even showing up to class for half the days. The days that he did show up, he just wasn't really paying attention which is actually all right if you're like really, if you, if you can study this stuff well on your own, it honestly doesn't really matter. If the teacher isn't teaching it well and you can teach yourself better, then that's totally fine. However, it was pretty clear that this kid was not going to do well in the class. And the thing is, right, there was a major test coming up that was going to have a really big impact on the grade. They only had two tests and a final, and the test and the final combined were worth like 80% of the grade. So if you bombed one of these, you were going to fail the class. So the day of the test, you know, the spoiled kid comes in late, whatever, basically completely unprepared. And uh, yeah, spoiler, it did not go well. But I got to say something. We got a sponsor today, baby, let's... Anyways, so today is the day of the major test, the major calculus test that both the spoiled kid and Nathan have. And remember, if you do poorly on this test, you will do poorly overall. You will not have a good grade if you do not do well on this test. No ifs, ands, or buts. I don't care if you get 120% of the final, it's not gonna help you out. So the spoiled kid comes in literally 10 minutes late to the exam. And this was a type of exam where you needed to squeeze out every single second you can get, that you are probably gonna be finishing when the time was up. I've always thought it was much better when teachers gave you like ample time to finish. Like if they were gonna make a 60 minute long test, they would give you 80 minutes to do it. And if they only had 60 minutes, then only make a 40 minute long test. You can't figure out exactly how long it's gonna take everyone to do it. So might as well, you know, undershoot then overshoot. However, this teacher was not like that. And this test was very difficult and you needed every second. However, very clearly the spoiled kid did not do well in this exam. Even Nathan was looking over, and this kid was on like page one, scribbling some stuff down, kind of looking like he was freaking out a little bit. So a couple days later, the teacher was walking around, or kind of like walking around the class with the graded exams. Hands it back to Nathan, he gets a B. Nathan's very proud of this. This was a difficult class and he spent a lot of time and this, he was worthy of the B. And the teacher went around and handed it back to the spoiled kid. And Nathan looked over because Nathan was kind of curious to see what expression the spoiled kid would have on his face because Nathan made the assumption that the spoiled kid was not going to be performing the best on this exam. And Nathan was correct. The spoiled kid, 
he had this kind of like shocked look at first, which I'm not sure why you'd be so shocked. Maybe you're like, dang, I definitely got a C and you ended up getting like a 20% or something. But anyways, this kid was not happy with the score. So he raises his hand and the teacher's like, yeah. And he's like, kind of like motions for the teacher to come over to him. And he's kind of like, okay, it's a little weird, but all right. And so the teacher walks over and the spoiled kid kind of like whispers something into his ear and the teacher kind of shakes his head no. Nathan doesn't hear exactly what it is, but I think the spoiled kid would have been like, can I do anything to change this? Or you made a mistake? Or for some reason, probably asking to change the grade in some way and the teacher is kind of indicating that no, that's not how it goes. So the spoiled kid said the second part a little bit louder. He was basically, he said something along, the, Nathan doesn't remember verbatim what this kid said, but Nathan knows that he said something along, basically along the lines of this. The kid basically goes, you're not going to want to fail me on this. Trust me. And the teacher kind of responds to this as teachers probably should of like a, did you just threaten me, bro? Like, did, not bro, but did you just threaten me, kid? Are you serious? Like, I'm the one giving out the grades. And you're just some, like, snot-nosed kid? Like, come on now. And I don't know exactly what the teacher said, but he said something along the lines of that, basically saying, don't go around threatening me. And the kid says, look, I don't want to, like, I don't want your life to be miserable, but it definitely can be if you don't help me out here. Look, we all, we both want the same thing, you to have a good life and me to have a good life. If you help me out here, that won't be an issue. And the teacher kind of laughs this off and says, all right, well, you better study well for your next test if you want to have a good life in this class, and walks away. And spoiled kid kind of shrugs his shoulders, and the teacher thinks nothing of it, and Nathan thinks nothing of it, because in most situations, this would literally mean nothing. First of all, it'd be pretty weird in the first place for a kid to be threatening a teacher like this, but to actually think that the kid would follow through and do something, that's, that's, kind, of, that's kind of out there. I'm not going to lie. That is kind of out there. However, right... Um, he does do something about it, and he does do something pretty crazy. So anyways, the next day comes around, and Nathan's sitting in class, and the spoiled kid is late. And Nathan just assumes that the spoiled kid is just not trying to come to class, as he skips it like three-fourths of the time anyway, so this wasn't anything out of the blue. But when the spoiled kid comes through the door, it is unlike... It, Nathan was not prepared for what he was to see. It was the spoiled kid followed by two older men in suits full buttoned up suits, you got the suit jacket, you got the shiny black shoes, you got the hair slicked back, parted on the left, you know, a very standard lawyer attire. And immediately, Nathan realizes that something is up. So at this point, one of the lawyers goes up to the teacher and says like, Mr. Davenport, or we'll make that his name, Mr. Davenport, you are officially being served. Which if you don't know what it means to be served, it's when someone wants to sue you. Um, you have to like give them a piece of legal, I don't know the law that well, but I'm not a law student, right? Gives them, like, a legal document saying that you need to show up in court or whatever. And uh, you need to, like, physically do it, I think. I don't totally know why that is a thing, but I think you need to physically go up and get them. I know that, like, there's a lot of videos of people trying to avoid being served. So they'll, like, I don't know, they'll, like, dodge, like, people trying to give them whatever, right? And sure enough, the teacher is stunned. The whole class is stunned, understandably. And uh, Nathan is stunned. I mean, this kid just literally served his teacher over failing him on an assignment. Doesn't get more spoiled kid than that. So the teacher looks at the, looks at the spoiled kid and he's like, what is the meaning of this? Like, why? Like, why are you suing me? And the spoiled kid goes on to say that, you know, that you caused him extensive emotional damages and that he has the resources and lawyers that can prove such. And the teacher's like, you didn't study for my exam and your grade reflects how well you studied. Like, that is literally it. And the, and the student, uh, this kid goes, well, I don't know, man. Like, I think I have the people that can argue in the court of law otherwise. And the kid leaves and walks out with his two lawyers. And after class, the word spreads so quickly. I mean, word would, sp I mean, I get it. Someone comes into class and sues your teacher for failing them on an assignment. I feel like I would tell literally everyone about that as well. That's freaking crazy right there. Yeah, so sure enough, word spreads incredibly, incredibly fast, incredibly quickly. Everybody is talking about that. There's nothing else that's really being talked about at this point. And uh, yeah, teachers start to get involved. The whole staff, basically the entire school, including the staff, faculty, whatever, are made alert by the end of the week. So Nathan gets in the car 
And his mom is like, I mean, the first thing she says, right? And this, he, he gets in the car right after class. The first thing Nathan's mom says is, did you hear about the, uh, like, did you hear about the case that's going on? And Nathan's like, how did you hear so quickly? Like, it literally was, he was, my teacher was just served in class today. And immediately Nathan's mom, like, it was your teacher? He's like, yeah. And she's like, so you know the student who served this guy? And he's like, yes. And she's like, you do know he comes from a very, like, wealthy family. And he's like, yeah. Isn't their money kind of suspicious, though? And she's like, yeah, that's kind of what all the other moms were saying on Facebook. But then again, when moms say something on Facebook, I don't necessarily take that as a, you know, as a pure fact, you know. I think that makes sense, though. So, yeah, they talk about it in the next day or whenever they get back to school. If this was a weekend, obviously, of the day in school, right? So... Nathan goes to his math class, as usual. Mr. Davenport was not there, and uh, instead was a substitute teacher. Understandably, Mr. Davenport had a little bit to do right now, and uh, the spoiled kid was actually in class. But the craziest thing was, when Nathan walked in the class, it was, the craziest thing wasn't the fact that the spoiled kid was there before him, which had, I think, literally never happened before, but it was the fact that the spoiled kid was not sitting alone. Next to him was a man in a suit. Presumably, one of his lawyers. Yeah, the spoiled kid literally brought a lawyer to his math class. And the thing is, I bet this kid, this kid skips his class most of the time. I bet this kid really wanted to show up to math class with his lawyer so he could show everyone that not to mess with him because he'd sue you. He has the money to sue you, man, or something like that. Yeah, and from here, it only escalates and gets crazier. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment spoiled down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. I'll try and heart as many of those comments as possible. I may not have the time, but either way, make sure to comment that down below. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Uh, I'm posting these uh, videos back on the Spotify. Sorry for the uh, little delay. I just kind of forgot to do it. So these videos will be on Spotify. It's in the description as well. I'm posting my shorts on TikTok. Go follow me on there. It's in the description. And finally, the best way to support the channel is to binge watch these videos. So after this one, go ahead and watch my older videos and tell me in the comments how many of my older videos you watched today or this week or what you do while watching my videos. I love to hear it. Anyways, let's get back to the story as things are getting quite interesting. So anyways, the spoiled kid is, is sitting in class and uh, with his lawyer, right? And Nathan turns over to one of his friends in class. He's like, dude, like, this is so ridiculous. And his friend's like, yeah, wait, talk to me after class. Like, I, I learned something interesting. And he's like, oh, okay. So after class, Nathan goes out and his friend kind of catches him. He's like, yo, like, I don't know if this is 100% true. I don't know if this is 100% like factual. I'm not 100% sure about this. But I did hear, and then his friend goes on to tell Nathan, Nathan something pretty crazy, I'm not going to lie. Pretty crazy, pretty out there. So this kid goes on to tell Nathan that, you know, this kid, that the spoiled kid is not messing around. And that apparently, like, his father really wants him to get into, insert X, really expensive Ivy League, prestigious whatever school. And that if this kid comes out with an F in his Cal class, that's going to be damaging to whatever and that whatever, right? That's going to make college admissions very difficult. So this guy, like this, his dad, is actually very, very, very much going to sue this guy unless he changes the grade. And it was initially going to be a bluff, but I think that to make sure that they can pull this bluff in the future, they're going through with it. And they actually have, like, the most expensive, the most ridiculous lawyers that will find a way to argue for, like, emotional damages. They will find a way to argue for it. Is it a guaranteed win? Absolutely not, because this case is ridiculous. However, this is, like, a legitimate thing. Like, this is a legitimate court case. Because for a little bit, Nathan thought that this was just... I don't know, like a, a massive bluff, right? A massive bluff. You pay someone to come in or you pay a lawyer to hand someone a piece of paper that seems all official because it has all this legal jargon on it, but in reality, it means nothing. I mean, that can't be too difficult to do. You just go to your dad's legal office, type in, if you don't give me an A in this class, I will sue you for a trillion dollars from the legal office or whatever, making it look all official, but in reality, it has no basis. So yeah, for the next week in school, it is the weirdest week Nathan has ever experienced. Why is this? Well, basically what happens for the next week is the administration slash the school is super worried that this court case is going to like 
it's going to leak out of just being on this teacher and it's going to be placed on the school as well. Like they're afraid that the whole school is going to get wrapped up in the lawsuit. So it's basically like a semi lockdown. Like it's not a full on lockdown every single day, obviously. Right. But in every single class, there is like multiple teacher. There's like for every teacher, there are at least one faculty member. Right. There's at least one faculty member almost to like make sure that nothing bad happens. And the math class that Nathan was in was put on like not suspension, but was told that they won't be meeting for the near future. Right. Indefinitely not meeting. So for at least the next week, Nathan does not have math class. Right. He does not have his calculus class because they don't even want to risk anything. And apparently all the classes that the spoiled kid is in mysteriously all stop happening at the same time. I think the school was just on super freak out mode and they're like, if any teacher says anything, you know, they'll be added to the case and then might as well round it up and just put the whole school in there as well or something like that. So for the next week, it was the strangest time at school at all. Like it was so weird. And like during lunch, it was like, it was almost like a prison lunch, bro. Like there was like faculty and staff around the tables, making sure nothing weird happened. And especially there was a ton of faculty and staff around the spoiled kids table, which was him and two of his like friends that he met because he's been like living there forever or family friends or whatever. Right. And his like lawyers are sitting at the table. It is the strangest, weirdest, and a pretty uncomfortable environment, to be honest. So Nathan is honestly just ready for this all to be over. So, you know, he go on the weekend, he meets up with one of his friends. And of course, like the big thing on everyone's mind is this court case because it is taking up, a, I mean, it's taking up a lot of time in school. It's the big crazy thing, whatever, right? And uh, yeah, so sure enough, they decide that, you know, they're going to look up or they're going to figure out, try and figure out like where it's being held or trying to figure out just more about it. So they look online and there's like articles, there's like news articles or whatever being printed about it. And they're very, very local papers. It doesn't hit mainstream or anything and it never does. However, in like some very local, there's like a, the school newspaper and then a super local newspaper that is kind of like, uh, I don't know, rebroadcast school newspapers or whatever. It's being covered. They're trying to figure out more about it. But this is also when Nathan and his friend decided to do a little bit of digging into the spoiled kids, like, family or whatever. And they're starting to find, like, they find little hints of, like, really weird stuff. They never come to a conclusion, so unfortunately I don't have some great, like, they were in the mafia type thing. But there was definitely some indications that, yeah, I'm not saying it was blood money, but I'm also not saying it was not blood money at some point, you know what I mean? Like, it was definitely very sus, and there were some, like, articles about adjacent family members being arrested for X, Y, and Z, and, the, like, money in offshore accounts, and all this kind of stuff. So things are pretty crazy. So Nathan goes into school the next day, and he doesn't get an email saying that his calculus class is not happening, because every single day of the week before, he got an email saying, hey, it's just not a thing, Okay. But this day he doesn't. So he decides to stop by his calculus class, assuming he's not going to see anyone in there. However, he goes in there. And you know who he sees? Mr. Davenport. Mr. Davenport is back to teaching. The whole school also felt really normal walking in, but he just kind of assumed that this was this, I don't know, so early in the morning that they weren't all locked down type whatever. So, but Mr. Davenport was starting a lesson. He's like, oh, like Nathan, uh, come on in. Like I'm just starting now. Nathan walks into his calculus class, completely thrown off guard. Cause at this point he was almost convinced that, you know, oh, I, I'm probably never going to have calculus class for the rest of the year. I'm going to have to self-study for the AP now. I mean, I guess it's kind of cool not to have that class every day. This is not always like the most useful thing. Hopefully they just slap an A on my report card because of what happened, but no. Like, class is starting up again. So Nathan walks in, and he sits down, and uh, there is one kid who is not in attendance for this class, which is surprising. I thought more kids would just assume it would be done, but apparently every kid except one kid is not there. Can you guys, which, can you guys guess which kid was not there? If you guess the spoiled kid, you're correct. The spoiled kid was the only kid who wasn't in attendance. It's crazy, right? So all of a sudden, he's like, he turns to his friend. He's like, yo, What? His friend's like, dude, huge updates. I'll tell you after class. So anyways, class is done. He gets out. And also once he's walking out, like Mr. Davenport is looking so confident, so like kind of happy with himself, looking back to normal, basically. Um, and uh, the friend stops him outside the class. 
And he's like, yo, dude, you got to hear this. So obviously Nathan's like, yeah, what's good? And his friend goes on to say, yeah. So basically what happened was the whole thing was starting to go down this weekend. And it was like preliminary court type stuff. I'm, by the way, I'm going to mess up some of this stuff because I'm not a legal expert. And this was told to me over Instagram DMs by another guy, by the subscriber who submitted this, who also isn't a legal expert, who heard it from a friend who isn't a legal expert, who heard it from someone else. Okay, this is going down the grapevine, many iterations and many iterations of people who don't know what they're talking about. So some of this is going to be a little bit messed up, but I'm going to do my best to give you the best uh, explanation of what happened. So essentially, it was like a very preliminary, like basic, like introduction to like the court process or whatever. And when this whole thing was put before a judge, Apparently, the judge was, like, so infuriated by, like, looking at, like, the case or whatever that he did two things. First of all, he dismissed it outright. He didn't even want to hear it. He thought it was ridiculous. And I think you, I, somehow he had the power to just not even hear it and just to say that, like, this isn't even a breach of the law. This is ridiculous. However, the judge was so mad by, way, by the, the, the way that, like, these people were trying to waste the court's time that he, like, was just, like, He's just like, I think he told one of his like staff or secretary or it was some, I don't know, intern working for him or something. Just be like, look into those pe these people. Like, these people are like ridiculous trying to sue for this. Like, is there, like, do they have a history of this? Because I think the judge at first was like, oh, is there like a history of like them doing this or whatever so I can like try and prove a reason not to hear from them in the future? But apparently, and I don't have specific details on this. But apparently, one of the interns started to find reports and court filings and just little stuff, right, about this family, about, like, some kind of fraud or strange activities. And the judge is like, I want to see a full-scale investigation to this. I think it was put to the sidelines before. Maybe someone that the family knew worked there and they had some kind of connection to them or something. But, yeah, now that the judge was angry about this and somehow the intern was able to sift through or sort through all the files or something... They're, they're going into a full investigation into this family for various things. Is It was, like, reported up to the FBI or something. It was, like, at this point, I do not have an update on what has happened. I think it's all very much behind closed doors. Nathan doesn't know if anything fully happened. All he knows is word got out that, like, a full, like, that not only did the case be, get thrown out, but also a full investigation into the family has started. So moral of the story is don't sue someone for something stupid, and also study for your tests or you will fail. Yeah, 